I'm Stephen Wong. I'm Joe Warren. I'm Scott Rixler. And I'm John Greiner. I'd like to welcome everyone to our class, an introduction to interactive computing in Python. Um, we've got a lot of fun activities planned for the next eight weeks. And to kind of get things rolling, we've all wore our t-shirt for Rock, Paper, Scissor, Lizard, Spock. This is going to be your project at the end of the first week. So guys, let's just play a game of kind of a battle royale here and just uh, we'll show them how it works. Okay. You ready? Rock, paper, scissors, scissors, Spock, shoot! Uh, Wait a second. Oh, every... I'm, I'm scissors. You're scissors. scissors. Oh, scissors. No, no, no. no. Scissors doesn't. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're having fun doing this class, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun doing the class. Um, I'll be back in a couple of seconds, and we'll talk a little bit more about the details and what's going to go on in the class, and maybe show you a couple of exciting things you're going to do. Uh, see you in a second. Well, welcome to class. We're all excited to see you here. We've been working very hard to get this class ready for you. In the landing page, we promised you this class would be simple and fun. So let me talk about why it's going to be simple. I mean, you're going to do tough stuff in this class, but I think that you're going to find that it's going to be easier than other programming classes for two reasons. First, we're going to learn Python. Python is a high-level language. Its syntax is easy to learn. Um, it's the language of choice for many classes here on Coursera. Um, I think you'll find that picking it up is easier than picking up another language like, say, JavaScript. The second thing is that the environment where you're going to build your Python programs is a very nice one. Um, it's an environment called Code Sculptor. It runs in your browser. It allows you to build all your programs inside a web browser. You don't have to download any software and it allows you to save all your files to the cloud and really only just manage the URLs for all the cloud saved versions. Now, I also said this class would be fun and really what you're going to do in this class is you're going to just build simple games. This class is an online version of a class that I've taught here for 10 years at RICE on intro game programming. Now I warn you, classes at RICE are hard so we're going to work pretty hard in this class but I'm really aiming to hold to our promise that we're going to teach you enough for you to be dangerous. In the rest of this video, I want to show you two things. For those of you that are new to Coursera, I'm going to walk you through the course webpage and kind of give you an overview of what you need to do in the first week of class. And then the second thing I'm doing is I'm going to show you something kind of exciting, a little bit of a taste of what you're going to build at the end of the class. I think you'll really like to see it. Okay, let's take a look at the class homepage. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, homepage for the class. So here we have a home page for the RICE version of the course that we taught right before this course started. So in the middle, what we see are some announcements that describe important things related to the class. Um, we also may send out emails that you should keep an eye out and describe important events related to the class. In the right-hand column, we see kind of a list of upcoming assignments. You may have a quiz due. You may have a mini project due. There may be new lectures that come up. On the left-hand side, we have the links that get you to all the heart of the course. If you click on video lectures, it pops us to a page which lists all the video lectures associated with the class. You've somehow managed to find your way to this introduction video. Uh, you can see that the lectures are kind of grouped in two sets per week. Um, when you finish one set of videos, you should then go and go to the quiz link and attempt quiz as uh, associated with that. The quizzes are only a small part of the grade in this course, but they're designed mainly to kind of keep you going through the topics, keep you moving so you don't let everything pile up until the mini project is due. And as you'll see occasionally, the quiz may have to may require you to do a little bit of work. So again, don't be disappointed if you put a little have to put a little effort into it. However, probably the most important part of the class are the mini projects. The mini projects are going to be where you go out and actually build a non-trivial piece of code. So then this is again from the week six of the RICE class. So we actually have six uh, mini projects up here. Um, the first one you're going to do is Rock, Paper, Scissor, Lizard, Spock. Um, you can see there are four dates attached to it. Um, in the regular schedule, we'll put out a mini project on Sunday. It'll be due the following Saturday. Building the mini project is only half the job. Once you've built your mini project on the following Sunday and Monday, you'll need to go out and assess five of your peers project as well as your own project. And it's from those scores and that you'll derive your score for your mini project. So don't forget you need to assess your peers work after you've finished your mini project. Coursera will prompt you how to do this. You'll come to this tab. Okay, so you've uh, been working on your project and you get stuck and so you need some help. So what can you do? 
Well, we can go up here and look under concept and examples. And if you click on that, it takes us to kind of an overview page with all the concepts in the course organized by week. If you want to get a little help on week one, you can click on this. This gives an outline form of the concepts that we're going to talk about in week one, kind of some bulleted points to help you remember what you need to know. Um, these links are very important. These are links to the examples that we use in lecture. Um, you can click on those and go back and look at the examples. The links are actually should be clickable inside the lecture too. You can pop up them in code, pop them up in Code Sculptor while you're watching the video. If you get stuck and it still doesn't help, we've had some very industrious students that are putting together extra examples. We call them more examples. They will pop up more examples in Code Sculptor that help you kind of get extra practice on the concepts we're talking about in class. If you're still stuck, um, my suggestion is you can go to the discussion forums. And here's a place where you can post questions and get answers. Now, I want to talk about a little bit of the logistics of how this is going to take place. We're going to have around 50,000 students. So my suggestion is if you're stuck, spend some time looking through the forms, finding a question that's close to your question. Upvote that topic. It's much more likely they will answer a question that's been upvoted 100 times than if you post a question that's only upvoted once. So look for answer, look for questions that are similar to yours, upvote those, take a crack at answering the ones that are highly upvoted. I um, don't really have much else to talk about. I want to quickly just point out here the honor code. So the honor code is really simple for this. Talk all you want, but don't share or copy code. You can post small chunks of incorrect code to the forums, but don't post a link to your working project or even your non-working project. It deprives your peers of the chance to go out and do the project on your own. Remember, this class is not for credit. It's really just for you to learn more about Python and learn how to build games. So let's keep it in that spirit here. Okay, I'm going to show you one more exciting thing before we wrap up. So I promised you something exciting, so here it is. We're sitting inside Code Sculptor, and I've loaded in a program. This is an implementation of your mini project for week seven and week eight. Um, without further ado, let's just run it. And it pops up a frame here. And this is our implementation of an asteroid-like game called Rice Rocks. So if I click in the middle, rocks start spawning. I can hit the space bars and I can fire out missiles and destroy the rocks. So we've got sound, we've got art, we've got a little physics. Um, we've got all the components of a real game. So, how are we going to manage to build this game in the course of eight weeks? Well, the first thing is the game's really not that complicated in Python. It's about 350 lines in uh, Code Sculptor. Um, we're going to provide you with about 150 lines that load in the R and organize the art. So, get you a good start. You'll need to produce about 100 lines of Python a week. Now, you might think, well, okay, 100 lines, that's probably tractable, but will I know enough to do it? The class is designed to teach you the concepts you need to know to build this project. So trust us, we'll walk you through how to do it. Um, you can do it here. And when you're done, you can use the Save Feature on Code Sculptor and grab a URL for your project and mail it to your friends and say, wow, look at this game that I just built. And they'll be very excited too. So let's finish up and I'll talk about my philosophy for the class. So I want to conclude with a few items of philosophy. So the first thing is that we're not just going to try to educate in this class. We're going to make an attempt to entertain. And the reason is simple. If our lectures are kind of deadly dull, you're not going to want to watch them. So we're going to do crazy stuff. Sometimes it's going to be funny. Sometimes it's going to be lame. But we're going to try. Because you can't learn to program if you're not here watching our videos. Second thing is we have some new technology. Code Sculptor was built this summer. So I have a feeling occasionally things are going to go wrong. Give us a chance. We're going to work hard to fix it. We want you to have a chance to build your program, so we're going to do everything in our power to make sure all the technology works. The last thing is we're going to ask you to be tenacious. Learning a program is tough. Um, there's no way around. If you want to be dangerous, you've got to put some work in. But the secret that I've seen in a decade of teaching students how to program using games is that at some point in the class, about three to four weeks in, the class goes from being work to being great fun. 
you're starting to build games that are fun to play with. You're starting to see kind of your creative side come out as you're kind of building modifications of the various mini projects. And so my experience is that if you stick with it, you'll find that you'll really, really enjoy what we're going to do in this class. And so please give it a chance. I think if you put effort in, you'll find that you'll really, really like what you're going to get out of this class. So I'm going to end up by doing what I said I was going to start my first point. I'm going to try to entertain a little bit. I want to point out that we shot lots of takes of that initial uh, version of Rock, Paper, Scissor, Lizard, Spock. And I actually beat him. So just watch this. Um, you guys ready to play? Yep. yep. Ready? Okay. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, shoot! <laughs> 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 All right, let's do it again. Do it again, guys. Right. Ready? Ready? Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors lizard, lizard, Spock, shoot! Oh, let's see. I cover that. I cover that. What did you do, Scott? What, you, uh, uh, paper disproved Spock. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, right. uh, we were having a lot of fun in this class, and uh, I think you're going to have a lot of fun too.